Fat Chow was always good for getting hardware, though he mostly provided for the triads and Yakuza, exactly the guys you don't want to have it. But right now, I didn't care, so long as he could hook me up with something powerful. Wherever you find Fat Chow, trouble's never too far behind. He's one of those wannabe triads, but he's as slimy as they come. Frankly, I don't even think he's Asian. And what do we have here? A little payoff? I guess not. Jack Slade! Shoot him! That deal didn't go very well. No, it really didn't. I think the, uh, threw in the line about I don't think he's Asian to justify giving him the guy, like, Jack Slade lines the whole chapter. Okay, so you're, uh, escaped from prison and you're trying to find, uh, quote, guns and information? Yeah, and Fat Chow, uh, is the guy to go to for both of those things. And Fat Chow resides in Chinatown? He does. You'll notice his name is a pretty, pretty heavily veiled John Woo reference, by the way. So there is that. Um... This chapter introduces a new gameplay challenge, uh, which I like to call, uh, Cutscene Dickery. Normally, you can use those vehicles for pretty good cover this level, but what happens is the cutscenes have you move to, like, really shitty corners like that. And there's a guy coming around that you can't target for God knows what reason, so you have to go to first person to kill him. I don't know. Well, to be fair, that was a pretty important cutscene. Oh no, very, yes. The Fat Chow running scene is a uh, cinematic masterpiece. I'm intent on killing that guy on top of the truck, but it just can't be done. And not even Shadow can scale those trucks. No. <laughs> there are certain things just Shadow can't do. Even, th even though he is the Wonder Dog. He's kind of what would happen if, like, Cujo fucked Lassie, is the idea. This level this level's actually pretty hard, because you're fighting upstream for the beginning of it. Like, everybody's kind of, like, you know, trenched in pretty well down the street, and you got to fight up. Like, you can see, like, the armor I've got's taken a pretty huge beating from it. And there's all these guys, like, on top of the trucks and on top of that overpass that are, like, a pain in the ass for the whole thing. Well, they gotta do something to compensate for you having to punch people for 50 minutes in the last level. <laughs> yeah, so there's just tons of gunplay from here on out is the idea. That's good. It, the good news is, after Chapter 3, you should be like a fucking melee expert by the time that's over with. But is melee required at all after that? <laughs> well, they shoehorn it in. Well, fortune now I'm out of weaponry, and... I wanted to disarm a guy, but I just ended up using him as a human shield for like half a second before his friends killed him. You could have meleeed him. I could have. This is a pain in the ass because if you don't have like a good long-range weapon, these guys are pretty tough to take out. These, these guys don't know that Jack Slade's been in prison for seven months. So it's time to pull out the Wonder Gun, which is this Magnum that has like. It just shoots across the level, pretty much. It's a sniper's rifle of pistols. Uh oh. Freeze, Slate! Put the gun down now! So this cutscene just served just to take away your weapons now. They're just being dicks to you for no good reason. Let's say you can use your melee again. Right? Uh, oh. No. <laughs> This, no, this time we're just gonna try to get the hell out of here as fast as possible. There's still guys left standing. Well, there's still guys standing. I can't allow this. I'm Jack Slate, and I must murder every single person I encounter. <laughs> you know, that's the weird thing. Only maybe about a quarter of these people are actual enemies. Everyone else is just a citizen of the town. <laughs> Who happens to be a gun owner, and... I'm not making a joke there. They really do. Well, this is Chinatown, Texas. Oh, here we go. Get ready I'm, for a great observation. Alright, I'm focusing on it. He walked in like he owned the place, which suggested he probably did. Eight bucks said I'd find ballistic merchandise inside. He walked in like he owned the place. Because he did. <laughs> Brilliant, Jack Slate. Well, well done. Well, well, well. What sort of illegal gambling den do we have here? 
that sought to do nothing but alert everyone. And I'm in this little alcove, so it just it just fucks you, basically. That was the best way he could introduce himself? What's yeah. all this illegal activity going on in here? Hope now. there's no crime going on. <laughs> so, we're in Fat Chow's illegal gambling den, which is just down the street from his, uh... Drug deal with the cops gone wrong, apparently. But does he own the place? That hasn't been established yet. He, well, he walked like it. Uh. Open up, Chow. We need to chat. Jack Slate? There's a bounty for him, dead or alive! Better if he's dead! Jack Slate! <laughs> that, see how bad the canister thing is? You can't, like, lock onto a guy next to you shooting you while one's in the air. Also, it's a good thing Augie Blatt's clothes fit you, like, exactly. Chris Christopher Walken only wears one size fits all, is the thing. And so does Jack Slate. It makes sense. It really does. Alright, now that we've got the key, let's, let's take this to the next cutscene. Jack Slate is anti-gambling. You know a guy named Silk? Yeah! Yeah, he, uh, he, he hang out at Black Orchid a lot. I, uh, what do you want? Why are you doing this to me? Hey, I just wanted to buy a gun. But I got plenty now, thanks. You call the cops? You crazy? I just call for backup. Cops show up on their own. At least we get a ton of guns now. Didn't you already have a ton of guns? It's time to get out. I don't want to start shooting cops. He's just doing his job. Freeze, Slate! Drop it! We're gonna get into another fight, which means we're just pretty much gonna use up all the ammo we got for him. So it's kind of useless. Also, um, you'll notice there are snipers in this alley, which might make you think to use your new sniper's rifle. But, mm -hmm. eh. Sniping kind of sucks in this game. Like Chow called for backup. Really? That's the one flaw? Yeah, you... That's the one flaw. It's easier just to do this. <laughs> My god, you're a, you're, you're a sniping expert. I'm really good at it, is the thing. You must have practiced for yeah. days to get that down. Well, the M4 is just such a good sniping platform. Um, what sucks <laughs> is if you try to snipe those guys, you're pretty much just out in the open while they peck away at your health, so there's no point. But I'll show off the sniper's rifle here, because I have no great guns and they're all kind of far away from me. I do have a double barrel shotgun, which is nice. <laughs> nice, I mean as in like a present to give to your mom or something. Oh, right. Um, I promise that analog doesn't work great in Dead to Rights. And there's not quite locational damage. Like, they recognize headshots and that's sort of it. If you miss a little, it'll hit the guy in the neck and he won't even flinch. Well, you just really messed up those quintuplets there. Oh. All right, I'm I'm not good at sniping. I'm just kidding. <laughs> They're going in front of me like one of those carnival ranges. <laughs> I knew I needed to go into Chinatown and win a bear for my niece. I knew this was the place to do it. I'm glad the cops aren't storming in here. They're just letting you guys, you know, work out your differences. It's nice. The cops believe in peer mediation. <laughs> Can we go in yet? Now nah, there's all gunfire out there. You crazy? No, nah, they're talking. They got. They got. They're gonna work this out. The uh, the double barrel shotgun pretty much kills everything in one hit. But its big problem is that it's got a long. I won't say reload time because there's no animation. You just can't use it for a while. Can't let the cops spot me, or it's back to old Sparky. Call for backup. But old Sparky was awesome. That alleyway fight's not particularly fun, and if you fuck up this lock picking, you have to do it again. Also, what's annoying is every fucking time you do a mini game, they give you the instructions, no matter how many times you've done it. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me too much. Nah. <laughs> Black Orchid. Thanks for that cutscene. So this guy Silt practically lived at this massage parlor. Time to find out why he tried to run me down. Welcome. Please, may I take your coat? 
I'll hang on to it, thanks. I'm looking for Marvin Silt. I hear he comes here a lot. Yes, please. This way. Hey, hand over the iron. I'm gonna want this back. Something smelled fishy, and it wasn't the sushi bar. They escorted me to a room and told me to sit tight. But I didn't have time for that. I had to find Sil. This way. These goons aren't gonna make finding Sil any yeah. easier. That was like six cutscenes in a row, and they were all horrible. What are you talking about? That last one really established some things. Like Jack Slate has no sense of tact whatsoever. <laughs> Aww. So now we gotta run through the massage parlor and just beat the shit out of people. Oh good, we're doing the melee stuff again, I missed that. The, what sucks is there's really no point to the melee stuff, because we're gonna get our guns back really soon, but, you know. What was going on in this room before you came in? Uh... I can't tell. Like, you can't tell me, or you don't know? I don't know. Oh. A little of both. Here, let's go to first person and find out. Well, there's something fishy about it, that's for sure. <laughs> Do you mean the sushi bar? Yes. No, 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 I'm sorry. It wasn't the sushi bar. No. He established it was not. Well, I find it fishy that there is no sushi bar in here at all. I find it fishy that we're going after Marvin Silt, who's a guy we clearly had in Chapter 3. But you ain't so bad. Which guy was he again? <laughs> he was the guy who tried to run us over. Oh, the pew 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 guy? I'm gonna need to get my guns back first. <laughs> Jack hears sex in the room and he's like, I need guns for this. Hey, horse. Come on. I'd like my iron back if you haven't already Let's sold it. Jack always approaches with protection. I like how they were running together and they just kind of bumped into each other. Uh, horse is a pain in the ass boss fight because he has unlimited like little thugs who come in and help him unlimited yeah like you can you can sit there beating these guys up and then another guy will come replace him it's a very popular massage parlor oh it is all the thugs and hitmen love it it's even more popular than that strip club despite the fact that you don't get to play as one of the masseuses I think what I'm going to do for the preview of this is I'm just going to leave the health bar that says horse and make people think you're fighting a horse. <laughs> Are you any good with Photoshop? Well, you know what the thing is? You actually do hide, fight a horse in level 9, so you know. Okay. Because that's what this game was missing for me, was Jack Slate kicking the shit out of a horse. Especially a horse that wasn't even doing anything to him. There are these bar stools on the right. I, I don't know why, but... Oh. oh yeah, and you're allowed to use shadow in this melee fight, which makes things a lot easier. <laughs> they, they implemented physics for the bar stools, and then pretty much nothing else in the game. So like, you can knock them over and shit. I don't... Maybe they finished level 5 with... Or level 4 with, you know, some budget left over. Gotta do something with it. <laughs> or one of their programmers. It was like, can you make us a physics engine? Like, I can do bar stools. That's about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all I learned. That was my graduate project. <laughs> That's all I can do. That's all the correspondence course taught me. I'm dying here, so I'm just gonna take the long way around. Can you even make those flags wave? Right? No, just the bar stools, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Candle? Anything? Nah, I can barely do shadows. Sorry. Alright, Silt. Where are you? Oh, okay, okay. What do you want? You want money? Is that it? I want to know who hired you to run me down outside the prison. Well, that, that wasn't nothing personal, man. I was told that if anyone other than Tattoo popped out of that pipe, to give him the run over. You was just at the wrong place at the wrong time, mate. Well, seeing as how I got your car, your phone, and your wallet, I'd say I was at the right place at the right time. Who gave you those instructions? A guy named Gopher. Said he was working for... Jack Slate, I presume. You can relax. I was only after Silt. Yeah, well, so was I, but I wasn't done with him yet. Sorry. Had to be done. You want to point that somewhere else? You want to tell me why you killed Silt? Just settling a score. Somebody from Mayhem Inc. killed my brother, and I aim to put things right. Mayhem Inc.? What, that Assassin's Guild out of Broadway? That's the one. 
Figure if I kill them all, I'll eventually get the guy who snuffed my brother through a process of elimination. What about you? What's your beef with Baldy here? I'm trying to find a hit or two. You know of a guy about this tall, one eye, dresses kind of frilly, carries a gold luger? Gold luger? Sounds like Patch, one of the Mayhem bosses. Thinks he's some kind of designer killer or performance artist. Real expensive, and real hard to find. Yo, uh, what say we find someplace quieter? So much to talk about. Um... Yeah, um... This chick's my only lead, I gotta keep her alive. <laughs> Heads up, Jack. More thugs just pulled into the parking lot. Come on, tough guy. Well, that's pretty unorthodox for a hostess, don't you think? What are you waiting for? Get them off me! The hit girl needs my help. Alright. First of all, I just want to play Mayhem Inc. The Assassin's, the Assassin's Guild out of Broadway. Like, it's, it's like a hit joint that has an address that everyone knows. <laughs> like, next to the Sparrows. What did you want to bring up? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of overloaded with everything right now. This is actually a pretty tough boss fight. You have to fight Lotus and two assassins who have boss-style health while there's this endless stream of masseuses, thugs, and uh, hitmen. And I don't, Jack suddenly is really chivalrous, and he can't use the he can't use the women as human shields or disarm them either. You just got to run around shooting everything. All right, that is not the Jack Slate way. Smoking, baby. The place was surrounded by triad goons, courtesy of Fat Chow and his friends. He sure liked to carry a grudge, but they say an elephant never forgets. See you in hell! All right, once we make it out of here, hang a right and head down the street. I'll cover your back. Cool beans, Fat Chow. He's not even that fat, really. Well, you couldn't really just call him kind of portly chow. See, unfortunately, Shadow grabbed me a shitty weapon, which is this silenced weapon. Bad dog. There was no point to that scene with the locker, because we ended up just losing everything anyway. So this massage parlor thing was a bust. Um, also, uh, it's funny you mentioned in level two, like, uh, that we were already in Chinatown, because they ended up just reusing the map. Yeah, I kind of noticed that. This is a yeah, this is the street where we chase down Augie Blatz, and this time we're heading the opposite direction, so it's kind of different. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted when you blew out that guy's fourth and fifth vertebrae. Yeah, Jack's sort of a jerk to his human shield. Get them off me! The hit girl needs my help. Eve is randomly sort of competent, like, sometimes you can just go the whole level, she's absolutely fine, and then other times, out of nowhere, you just have, you have to, like, babysit her. It's, it's really a pain in the ass, but... Are there any women who wear, like, a complete shirt that covers more than 50% of their body? Yeah, oh, in this game, no, no. Oh, okay. So that, that would have been an okay disarm, if not for the camera angle. I don't know, that was just rude more than anything else. It, uh, it's one we, the one we saw before in level 3. Um, what's weird is the pistol disarms, they like ran out of names, so they just call them things like bullet to the head. And like the no-brainer. It's like they're all kind of just interchangeable. I call that uh, last one the lumbar puncture. Also, uh, Eve's voice actress is whiny. Kind of a pain in the ass, frankly. Yes. Get over here, Jack! <laughs> it's, it's this, like, horrible Asian impersonation, and I don't know. And the best is, uh, I think it's right about here? Yeah. No, it's not. Um, later on, Jack goes, like, think fast, and his method of thinking fast is just shooting people. Like, that's his clever way of getting... Solving a problem. Think fast, blow a guy's spine out. They never try to actually shoot the dog. No, no. Only sickles that evil. It's like, hey, Hitman number 34, that dog eating you. Well, see ya. <laughs> There's a dog. Yeah, yeah. whatever. 
Good luck with all that. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> you know, something still is smoky out here, and it's not all the gunfire. Oh, wait, yes, it what is. What are you waiting for? Get them off me! Think fast, Jack. There it is. So, no one calls with a noise disturbance complaint or anything? Nice outfit, Chow. But I'd go with the double X next time. Alright, Fat Chow's not a hard boss fight, but he's got a rocket launcher so he can kill you in one hit. Mm. And he's kind of random about being able to shoot ahead of his target, so... It's kind of luck of the draw whether or not you're going to beat this guy. That was fun. Why don't you give me a call sometime? Maybe we can do it again. You mean like a date? Hey, if shooting bad guys is your idea of a date, then, yeah, like a date. <laughs> Eve Adams? That can't be your real name. And just like that, she was gone. Not the first time a woman like that has sparked my interest and run out on me, but I couldn't let myself get distracted. I had a grave to visit. My father's. Well, when the way you pick up women is, that's your name? <laughs> okay. Okay, alright, but to be fair, her name was Eve Adams. Well, yeah. But Jack does need to work on... I, I'll agree with you on that, but Jack does need to work on his game a little bit. I, I don't know. I, I hear there's nothing more of a turn-on than um, slaughtering about a hundred people. I do think Jack deserves some credit, though. That's the first time he's talked to somebody for more than a second before shooting them. Or telling his dog to decapitate them.